Good morning on this 25th Sunday after Pentecost. You're listening to a live broadcast from Luther Memorial Church in Pierre. 
Luther Memorial is located at the corner of Nicolet and Prospect, just west of the state capitol. The minister at Luther Memorial is Senior Pastor Craig Wexler. Special music will be provided this morning by the Senior Choir. Today's organist is Linda Steele. Hymn numbers this morning are 632, 707, 712, and 815. Our service is about to begin, and our opening hymn is O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, number 632 in the Red Hymn. So this morning is a special day. The baptism boy, he's ready. He's already down here pounding on his faith chest, ready to go, and he was reaching for the Bible in the pew. So little Owen's going to be baptized this morning. Um, I, I think he's a preacher in training. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm glad to have you guys here this morning. A couple quick announcements uh, this morning. Um, this, uh, this is our holiday week. I know, you're looking at me, and you're like, that's a green stole, but there's blue all around. We're, we're just getting things ready. How many, else, how many of us have decorated already? I know some of us have. Yeah. That's kind of how we're flowing around here with the holiday weekend this weekend. Um, we, we just decided to get the blue pyramids up. Kathy and crew, there's going to be many others that are going to be sticking around after worship. If you love decorating, please stick around for a little bit after worship. At 10 o'clock, um, they already have stuff lined out downstairs, ready to go, decorations. And then that way, we in, on staff and here at the church can be at rest this, uh, this holiday weekend um, and be prepared uh, for Christ the King Sunday next week and then Advent starts. So if you're willing to stick around and help decorate uh, for a bit this morning, please do. Uh, meet out in the Narthex. Is that where we're going to probably meet, Kathy? Narthex Fellowship Hall downstairs. Um, also, uh, with that being said, we do not have worship uh, this Wednesday or next Saturday. We do have Sunday worship. We have Sunday worship next week, just not the Saturday night service. Um, and then uh, lastly, I want to share with you guys um, how appreciative I am for your guys' support with our high school youth ministry. Um, the flocking is going to be coming to an end very, very soon. Uh, between insurance sold on the lawns, between uh, those who have donated, between the soup cook-off we had earlier this fall and all, um, our high schoolers have raised just shy of $10,000. So that is, that is you guys being generous. <laughs> So I am grateful for that, and I'm grateful for all of you. Uh, last announcement, uh, as, as you've noticed, we do have the job opening for janitor and uh, maintenance uh, person. If you are interested or you know someone who'd be interested, um, some have asked, is it part-time, is it full-time? At this point, I'm going to say it's negotiable. If there's interest in that role of serving this congregation in that capacity, reach out and we'll be in conversation. Uh, with that being said, I invite those who are able to please rise. Let us begin our worship this morning as we always do. We come together in confession of our sin, receiving God's mercy, and preparing to hear God's word through music and the word. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. We begin with a moment of silence to reflect. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our gathering hymn this morning is O God, Our Help in Ages Past, number 632 in our red hymnals. Number 632.
God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples. You give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. morning. Um, just, Rod, thank you. And all of you in choir, absolutely beautiful song. And I know Rod's always taken, there's, I know there's more secret musicians amongst us. Uh, he'll, he'll, gladly, uh, he'll gladly take you and train you well. So thank you for that. <clears throat> the first reading is from Zephaniah chapter 1, verses 7 and 12 through 18. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. 
The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that shall walk like the blind, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm chapter 90. Please read responsively. The Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains we were brought forth, or the land and earth were born. From age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday. It is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you set forth, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When we, you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of your life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us our number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not he need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light children and children of the day. We are not of the night or of, or of the darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and for those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the Alleluia verse in the reading of the gospel.
comes to us today from the book of Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Continuing on in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability, and then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came. He came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping what you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of the Lord. It's really difficult to say that, amen? You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is difficult to say glory to God. It is difficult to say thanks be to God when we hear texts like this because, again, in the context of Matthew 25, this is Jesus before his final nights on earth, and he's having this conversation with his disciples. He's giving them the parables of the end of times, what is to expect. This is the Lord's last will and testament. And what we hear is a lot of choosing. Choosing of who's in, choosing of who's out, choosing of who's going to make the cut and choose uh, the choosing of those who might be thrown out into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that is uncomfortable. So let's figure out what Jesus is saying here. When we hear, uh, when we hear this titled, The Parable of the Talents, Sometimes in the old days of Sunday school and vacation Bible school, we might chalk it up to and reduce it to the talents. You know, God has given you the ability to be a masterful choir director, right? It might give us the ability to be a phenomenal basketball player. That's not the talents we're talking about at all. The talents is a measurement of weight. Uh, in the literal sense, it's a measurement of economic financial weight. If you were bored and you wanted to Google what is a talent worth, it's something like $2.1 million dollars. So the master, the landowner, the business owner, he's preparing himself for a trip, and what he chooses to do is he chooses to give. I want to pause there for a second. I want us to understand that what the master, also known as God, is doing, God is a giver. He's not a demander. Notice in this parable, never once does he demand anything of his employees, of his servants. When we go back to it, he is preparing to go on a trip, and he knows, he knows who his best employees are. He knows that they understand uh, his hopes and expectations of building the kingdom, building upon what is already in, in, the, in the works. And what does he do? He hands to one of them five talents. He hands another two talents. 
And he hands another one. He doesn't command, he doesn't demand. He gives it to them. They know what they are to do, in theory. And then he leaves. And the first, what does he do? He takes those five talents. He instantly goes right to work, doing exactly what he knows he's supposed to do. Gets to work, doing exactly what he knows the master would love for him to do. And he starts exchanging. He starts doing what he does best. He starts doing, using his gifts, using his abilities in the way that God has, uh, has placed in his heart and mind to do. And what does he do? He doubles the talents to ten. Same thing with the one with two talents. He's given two talents. Now, I know in the world of, of equality, we are wanting, we're wanting to know, well, why, didn't, why wasn't he given five talents? It wasn't his to debate. The master gave him two, so he gave him two. And what does he do? He takes those two, and just like the guy with five, instantly, he doubles it. Any business owners in the room, don't need to show hands, but any business owner, any manager, anyone in the administrative role, when you have a, an employee that just knocks it out of the park time and time again, and you get back tenfold, you get back fourfold, you are excited, right? But there's the one. There's the third employee with the one talent. He starts to make a lot of assumptions. He makes a lot of assumptions based on fear. I'd love to figure out his narrative in life. I'd love to figure out his relationship with the master as to why he jumps to the conclusion he does, but guess what? Jesus doesn't give us that in the parable, does he? But what we do know is that he is a reactionary character in the parable. He's reactionary, and he is worried. He is afraid, and what he chooses to do is he chooses to dig a hole, literally put it in the hole, waiting for the master to come back. Think about that. He is waiting for the master's return, and he's waiting in fear. When the master returns, he digs it up, and there, too, he appears before the master, and he says, he says these bold words. He says, Master, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, and I went out, and I hid your talent in the ground. See, here it is. It's what belongs to you. Have it. And his master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I had not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Question mark? Bold. It's a bold accusation and an even bolder response. You say, I, th I think for a lot of us, we too operate, operate and prioritize our entire lives out of possibilities of fear. I think a lot of us would hunker down and bury what we have in the ground, terrified that it might be stripped away or taken away or lost in one way, shape, or form. Amen? Amen? We have these moments in our lives, we have these chapters in our lives that remind us of the things that we have and just how precious they are to us and how devastating it is when something, the things that we have, our stuff, gets messed up. I had an encounter like that just uh, in the last month. In the last month, I was heading up, uh, heading up north, up by Pollock and Selby area for a Northern Plains monthly conference meeting. And three months, no uh, three months, three miles north of Oneida, it hit me. Literally, the deer. It hit me. Now, I've had people ask me, so you hit the deer? No, I did not hit the deer. The deer was not in the road. I did not see anything on the road. I'm driving, and at about 69 miles an hour, thwack, I feel the si something hit me on the side. The truck literally shifts to the side. I look in my side view mirror, and there are cartwheels all the way down along the side. Can any of you resonate with me? And then I screech on the brakes, I pull over on the shoulder, I get out, and I start looking at the side of the truck. I'm, I'm amazed that nothing in the front is wrecked. I'm grateful for that. I'm going down the side, I'm like, there's $1,000, there's $1,500, that's $2,500, that's, oh, the bumper's got a hole in it, we're, we're in trouble, amen? And ironically, I look behind me, 50 yards behind me, and there's the deer standing in the ditch, literally shakes its head and bounces back into the corn. 
It was like a proverbial gesture of sorts. So I get up to, I, I get up to Norway Lutheran Church, where we had, uh, where my dear friend, colleague, Pastor Jamie Odie is, is hosting us. And, and we sit down, I was one of the first ones up there, and, and uh, we sit down over coffee and we start talking about it. And I, I shared my, my moment, and Jamie looked at me and she goes, you love that Toyota. <laughs> Said I do, it's got a special place in my heart, doesn't it? And she goes, well, you, you certainly think so. I said, yeah, and and she looked at me, and she goes, that's really rubbing you wrong, isn't it? And I said, "Mm mm-hmm. She goes, it's kind of a reminder that it's just a thing. My wife said the exact same thing about eight hours later when I was back home. It's just a thing. It's a reminder that it is something that is just a blink of an eye, and it wasn't yours to begin with, dear Craig. And that's just it. That's that's the side of the coin that we need to flip over in this parable. Every single thing we have is whose? God's. Everything. From the clothes on our bodies this morning, to the vehicles out on the street in the parking lots, to the gas that goes in it, to the food that we will put on the table for lunch after this, to the donuts. By the way, thank you, Jason and Thelma. You always hit me right in the right spot with a donut in the morning. Boyd, Pam, you guys, you cut shots. You always take care of me with the donuts. Those donuts are gifts given, right? And I know we want to pause and we say, well, but Pastor, I I worked really hard. I, I invested a lot of time and resources into my education, into the schooling. I mean, I worked hard in the networking with people, and, and that's how I landed a, an opportunity with an interview with a, a great boss in the office. And, and to that I say, yes, dear servant. God has blessed you with phenomenal abilities and resources. And what do we do with it? What do we do with the talents that have been given to us? As uh, one of my professors said on a podcast today, the master has given you house money. Imagine going to Vegas with the house money. You don't even have to put a single one of your dollars on the table. You show up, Caesars, uh, or I've never been there. Never been there. I don't really have a desire to go there. What are some of the other casinos? You don't need to give me the casinos. They give you their money. Imagine, they give you their money. And what do you do with it? God's given you everything you have. And what do you do with it? I think oftentimes we, we live with it in a sense of fear. In a sense of fear that God might actually be fair. Now that seems odd. What do you mean, Pastor, by God might be fair? Because this parable actually seems rather unfair. And the truth of the matter is, the master, God, is unfair. Because for some, we hear this gospel, we hear those two, those first two employees, we think that this is like prosperity, look what they can do, look what they did, and and look how they were rewarded. Actually, they weren't rewarded, were they? God didn't give them the talents as a reward, God gave them the talents because he knew that they would do something phenomenal with it. The reward is that they, in their faithfulness, in their trust of the master, in their trust of the resources that God gave them, they responded with care, with love, with faithfulness. They invested appropriately, doing exactly what they knew the Lord was asking them to do. And what comes of it? Dear, good, and faithful servant, come. Come into the kingdom. Come into the joy of the master. But it's not what they did. It's what he chose to do with them. The third servant, however, what did he do? Well, he did receive a label. And it's one of the most bold labels in all of Scripture. You wicked, lazy servant. Wicked appears only a few times in all of Scripture. And when it does, wicked is synonymous with the word evil. Why would the master call him evil? It's not specifically what he did, it's actually what he didn't do. 
It was because he was gripped and paralyzed in fear, which he himself admits to the master. He is afraid because instead of taking comfort and hope and trust in what the master has given, what he has done is he's whispering or he's listening to the whispering in his ear. He's listening to the devil whisper, well, what is the master really like? The master really isn't going to take care of you, is it? The master isn't really giving you this with the hopes that you'd do something with it. The master isn't really merciful, is he? The master isn't really going to give you uh, the opportunity to enter into the joy of the kingdom, is he? It goes all the way back to the very opening of Scripture with Adam and Eve as well, in which the serpent, the very first thing the serpent asks... Did God really say? And this third servant is living his life filled with fear, wondering, did the servant, did my master really mean what he's meant or what he has said time and time again? He lives in response with, of fear. We too are afraid that God actually might be fair because what is it that we deserve? Well, as Paul says to us time and again, and as Jamie read from us in 2 Thessalonians, the wages of sin, in Romans, Paul says, the wages of sin is, the wages of sin is death. So if we are to get, if, if we truly want God to be fair, what should we receive? Nothing but death. That's not what God gives, is it? That's not what God chooses. That's not what the Master gives. The Master elects us. The Master speaks directly to us. The Master brings you into the house of the Lord on Sundays and puts a word in your ear. The Master gives you talents as well. The Master gives you resources as well. The Master has put breath in your lungs this morning. Amen? The Master has blessed us with some sunshine again, amen? The Master has given us so many opportunities and just turn on the TV and just take a glance at it and we'll notice just how much the Master has truly and utterly given. And the Master gives us with joy. He brings us into the kingdom and we don't deserve it, but he desires it. He gives us the house money to work with. He enjoys watching us do exactly what he's given us the abilities to do, but we choose fear of losing it all time and time again. Brothers and sisters in Christ, be grateful for the master. Let us be grateful for his unfairness. I'm grateful he's unfair. I'm grateful that he chooses mercy rather than condemnation. I'm grateful that little Owen, who's already digging at the pages of the Bible right there, you know, I'm not just saying it to stoke the sermon. He's literally debating with mom right now in the Bible. He too gets to enter into the joy of the master with the waters of baptism today. And that is the good news that we cling to. So let us come in. Let us take those talents. Let us use those talents. Let us smile and give thanks for the unfairness of our God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite those who are able to please rise for our song of the day, our hymn of the day. Lord of glory, you have bought us number 707 in a red hymnals, number 707.
congregation may be seated. How are you, Owen? You're still at peace, bud. I love it. I love it. We come together at this time now in our sacrament of holy baptism for Owen David Melhoff. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you parents desire to have Owen baptized into Christ? If so answer, we do. As you bring Owen to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, and to place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer, so that Owen may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Owen grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, we do. Rihanna, as, as Owen's sponsor, do you promise to nurture Owen in the Christian faith as you are empowered by the, God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, answer, I do. People of God, members of Lutheran Memorial Church, do you promise to support Owen and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If, an, if so, answer, we do. we do. I ask us all to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Oh, do you believe, do you believe in the Holy Spirit? <laughs> I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, forgive me, my mind went blank. Oh, and it is time, bud. This might change the day. Owen Melhoff, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Holy, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And with this oil, we mark you with the cross of Christ forever. In the name of love. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Owen with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. O oh, and child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And amen. O oh, and we light this baptismal candle. And I ask that your parents remember this day. We light this candle on your baptismal birthday. And light it as many times as you want, you guys. You guys have a whole stack of boys' candles now. And, uh, and, and it's, uh, it's also a reminder that it is God's light that shines in our lives. And as we are promised in John's Gospel, a light shines in the darkness. And the darkness never overcomes it. Let your light, Owen, so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized together. We welcome you into the body of Christ here at Lutheran Memorial and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Let's give them a round of applause.
As our ushers come around with the offering plate, we will also prepare ourselves for a time of prayer. you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we ask you to enter into our lives this day, and we ask you to remind us that everything we have has been given as a gift to you on loan from you for us to do your will and your work in this world, Lord. Free us from the fears that, uh, that bind us, the fears that bind us to our stuff, to our things, uh, to the blessings that you have given us, Lord. Free us so that others may enter into your kingdom as well through your joy, your gracious words, through your gospel, your good news of good new life given through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation. We ask you to be with all the people of the world this day and to bring wholeness to the body of Christ. Where there is war, we pray for truth and peace. Where there is starvation, we pray for sustenance. 
Where there are fires and earthquakes, we pray for stability and rejuvenation. We pray for the community of Aberdeen this week amongst the violence that was, perp the violence that was perpetrated. We pray for our community, especially our first responders, who time and time again respond to tragic, uh, tragic accidents and, and tragedies. Lord, we, we pray for their strength and sustenance and their courage to continue on. And we also pray for our school district, along with many school districts who are facing the difficulty of, of financial decisions ahead. We pray for all who will travel this week to be with family. Might we all gather in gratitude for what you, Lord, have first given us. Lord, in your mercy. And God of strength and healing, we ask you to continue being present with all of the families on our prayer list, especially Guy Rapp, Miles Hupp, and Stacy Smith. Give them peace and comfort amongst their struggles. Give them hope and strength during their tribulations. We also lift up the family of Mel Melvin Cunningham in his passing this week. We pray for their comfort in your resurrection promises, O Lord. And as always, Lord, we also ask you to be present with our servicemen and women throughout this world who are giving themselves for our security and freedom, and we especially pray for their loved ones back at home. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O, o Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him Sunday morning worship service from Luther Memorial Church in Peru. Join us for worship on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m., Saturday evenings at 5.30 p.m. for our contemporary service, or Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. 
if you're unable to attend if you're unable to attend any of our three worship services you are invited to tune in to our live radio broadcast at 9 a.m. each Sunday morning on KGFX 1060 a.m. 103.1 FM or on drgnews.com by clicking Listen Live. Sunday and Wednesday services are also live, brought, live streamed on our LMC Facebook page. You can catch our sermon podcast on an app of your choice or right from our website under the Media tab. Our radio broadcast rely on some financial support from members of Luther Memorial and other regular listeners and viewers. If you would like to sponsor a radio broadcast in honor of a special occasion or in memory of a loved one, please contact the church office at 224-8608. On behalf of Pastor Craig Wexler and the Congregation of Luther Memorial Church, we extend our prayers to you and yours for God's care and guidance throughout the coming week. Serve the Lord. Let the decorating begin.